Parents are extremely important in the development of any child, and there's four distinct patterns of parenting that were, you know, talked about and researched by Baumrind. So the first of which is authoritarian parents. These are the parents that say things like, it's my way or the highway, or under my roof you're going to follow my rules, you know, these kinds of things. They, in they enforce rigid rules and demand strict obedience to their authority. They're not generally interested in what their children think or feel, and the consequence is that as these children get older, and become parents themselves, they tend to be emotionally stiff and lacking in curiosity. Then you have authoritative parents. Now authoritative parents provide firm and consistent guidance combined with love and affection. So they definitely do provide that kind of contact comfort we were talking about last time. Now these parents, you could call this democratic style parenting because these parents are much more willing to answer questions and you know negotiate rules and talk about you know how these rules should be enforced and things like that the consequence of you know treating their children like adults is that the children learn to become adults they learn to be more competent be more self-controlled and independent and assertive then you have the permissive parents these are the kinds of parents that simply give very little, if any, guidance. They allow too much freedom, provide too much positive feedback, or just don't enforce the rules, if there are any rules in the first place. These, these, uh, these parents tend to have children who are immature, impulsive, and dependent on others. These, are the, these children grow up to be the least self-reliant and self-controlled of all the different parenting types. And many people would say permissive parents are the worst kind. You know, n not, not you know, laying down the rules in your household it will result in you know, really spoiled, annoying little kids. And I understand the argument for permissive parents being the worst, but in my opinion, the fourth kind of parent, the uninvolved parent, is the worst kind. We also call these neglectful parents. These are parents that just don't really pay attention to their children. They don't pay attention to the physical, emotional, or psychological needs of their children. The consequence is that their children tend to be more independent because, you know, they have to grow up. They have to learn to get by on their own from a very early age. But they also have trouble forming relationships and may suffer from emotional disorders. Now, beyond these four basic parenting styles, we do see some common patterns of, of behavior uh, in different kinds of parents. There's some stereotypical differences between the parenting style of a mother and of a father. So the maternal influence, the, the effect the mother has, tends to be more of a nurturing role, like feeding the child and giving the child um, you know, emotional affection, you know, things like that. The consequence of this, of taking care of these very basic needs, is that the child is much more, in general, is much more attached, has, is much more influenced by the mother than the father. Now the stereotypical behavior of fathers, the, you know, those parental influences, is that the children tend to play, the children tend to engage in, you know, story time and things like that. So the, the father is typically the, the fun parent, and the mother is typically the reliable parent. We also see some interesting differences in parenting styles across different cultures and ethnicities. Uh, for example, parents that come from a more African background tend to emphasize things like loyalty and interdependence, security, having a positive identity, and persistence. And these parents definitely tend to stress things like obedience and the respect for elders in the community. Uh, Hispanic parents tend to emphasize things like strict standards of discipline and the centrality of the family. So you need to really think about the family first. 
and there's a lot of stress. They put a lot of stress on cooperation, especially within the family. Asian parents tend to emphasize things like interdependence among individuals and the need to set aside their own interests, their own goals for the greater good. So it's kind of like the Hispanic parenting, but now instead of just talking about cooperation in the family, now they're talking about cooperation in a much larger kind of societal sense. So the parents, uh, Asian parents tend to stress things like respect and self-discipline in older children. And then parents that come from more Arabian background tend to emphasize things like politeness and conformity to the rules of society. These, these parents tend to demand things like obedience and respect from their children. One of the major ways that parents influence their children is by teaching them language. So language development is closely tied to how parents interact with that child. Now there are some basic uh, behaviors that you know children will do regardless of parental interaction. Like children around the age of six to eight weeks of, uh, are going to start repeating vowel sounds. They're, they'll make cooing noises like ah, ah, ee, you know these kinds of basic vowel noises. And it's not until much later, about between five to eight months, that the child will start babbling. You know, repeating meaningless language sounds like ba 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 or ga 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 or da 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 it's really no you know random chance that mama and da da are things that a very very young child can pronounce very well in fact if you look across all the different languages on the planet most of them have names for the two parents that a child of this age can pronounce it's always something like papa or Dada or Fafa or something like that. Now, when the child gets to around the second year of their life, then they've hit what we call the set single word stage. So this is when the child is going to say their first word, and they'll start just you know naming things or you know identifying certain kinds of behavior. Like th they might say, "Cookie" or "Doggy" or "Sad" or things like that. And this will slowly kind of transform into what's called telegraphic stage, where the child starts stringing together like two word sentences. So instead of just, you know, pointing at something and saying cookie or want, now they're going to say want cookie. So after the age of two, after the child has mastered this kind of single word stage, you're going to see language development accelerate rapidly. Like I said earlier, parents. One of the major contributions of uh, parental influence is on helping the child learn a language. So the environment definitely plays a major role in the, that child's language development. The basic idea is whatever languages the child is exposed to from birth are the languages that child is going to learn to perceive and learn to use when they get older. But before, they, before the child can learn to use any kind of formal language, the child is all, kind of instinctively, automatically develops a rudimentary system of signals, like a very rudimentary kind of language that they share with their parents, which includes behaviors like touching, looking, uh, making these kinds of girly noises, you know, non, basically language that doesn't have any words. There's a lot of research into exactly how children learn to speak a language. So the, the major learning theories argue that either the children's linguistic ability seems to be innate, so that's the nativist position. It's kind of like we have this biological mechanism called a language acquisition device that allows us to just detect and acquire the rules of a particular language. And then the other um, major direction that a lot of theorists go is environmental. So we don't have any natural tendency to learn a language. It's just we're immersed in a society that uses language, so we acquire it that way. Now, most, uh, most modern theorists don't really say it's you know, this one or that one. Most, most of them say take what's called an interactionist approach 
which acknowledges the role of ch you know newborns like innate ability like there may actually be some kind of mechanism that allows them to acquire language but of course the environment is extremely important as well as humans we tend to just kind of naturally speak differently to young children and you know sometimes chihuahuas or cats or whatever but the whole idea here is we have this kind of natural like instinctive reaction when we see these cute little faces to speak with higher pitched voice and use short simple sentences uh, slow our speech and use exaggerated voice inflections and repeat ourselves over and over again now we call this you know baby talk or parentese or motherese and this doesn't seem to be completely you know pointless there, there actually seems to be a reason for this it's by, by having this kind of speech, by you know, having a higher pitch and ha using very simple sentences and things like that, we are trying to make it as easy as possible w for the baby to pick up on the important sounds and the important rules of our language. Of course, nobody, no parent is thinking, oh, I need to speak slower so my childr children can learn about how verbs work. No, it's completely instinctive. It's completely unconscious and it definitely does seem to serve that purpose.